ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಧಿಮಂದ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮುಧೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ ಸಾಂಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ಸಾರ್ವಭೌಮಚಾರ್ಯ a beautiful ashtakam describing the 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 features of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu hari krishna so this uh this ashtakam you can sing and it will uh <clears throat> put the form and the features of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in your mind there's something special about this uh yeah we do have it okay let's go back to the translation of the other one I used to sing this song and then uh, some but he gave me a recording in Vrindavan in front of the Radha Damodar Mandir they used to have this uh, during Kartik they would sell cassette tapes you've probably never even heard of them before but there used to be things called tape recorders and they had these little cassettes and so the there was a crew out there then they would sell these uh, cassette tapes and somehow uh, going through them I found this this ashtakam somebody singing it and it was just so charming to me i listened to it over and over and over again some um brijabasis or somebody singing this uh, and just uh, it struck me first of all that to find the ashtakam in vrindavan because it reminded me the way in which chaitanya mahaprabhu was distributing vrindavan to everyone through his disciples and the deeper you go into shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's pastimes and personality the more you find vrindavan the more you go deep the more deeply you go into vrindavan the more you find shri chaitanya mahaprabhu this is how it works so finding the this uh there and listening to it in vrindavan i found to be very satisfying so this is a very sweet um prayer also remembering that it comes from sarvabhauma bhattacharya who is a pakamayavadi and he uh, after he met this young boy 24 year old sanyasi shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and he totally changed and <clears throat> this is a big victory for the movement of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and it's the biggest victory in anyone's life that somehow or other he or she comes in contact with shri chaitanya mahaprabhu or one of his devotees and then makes a decision that changed my i changed my mind i'm i'm not going to go for that other stuff i'm going to go for uh serving shri chaitanya mahaprabhu that's a monumental to say the least decision that someone can make so these songs and prayers by others who have made that decision can actually change our own hearts we'll see that just by hearing them we get infused with these bhajans are infused with their mood and and it can enter into us also his super excellent spiritual body is a brilliant golden color he is incessantly churned by sublime transcendental ecstasies a fraction of his mercy is able to deliver all the three worlds and to that son of shri sachi devi i bow a verse please from a trace a fraction of mercy of of krishna a 10th chapter yes you're almost there 14th cha 10th canto 14th chapter everyone should know this verse ata pite dev padam bujat vaya prasad leshana grihit evahi janati tatvam bhagavan mahim no na chanya eko pitram vachin van you got it ata pite dev padam bujat vaya no you i got it you you look get the mic translation my lord if one is favored by even a slight trace of mercy of your lotus feet he can understand the greatness of your personality but those who speculate to understand the supreme personality of godhead are unable to know you even though they continue to study the vedas for many years atapite deva verse number 10 14 29 10 14 29 two within himself okay let's look at it 10:14:29 This verse is quoted I should say Shri Prabhupada quotes this verse frequently it's a very important verse I'll say please repeat Ata pite deva padam bujha dvaya Ata pite deva padam bujha dvaya Prasad alesha nugrihita evihi Prasad alesha nugrihita evihi 
जानाति तत्वम् भगवन् महिमो न चान्य एको पिचरम् बचिन्वन् Translation My Lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. But those who speculate to understand the Supreme Personality of God are unable to know you, even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. So back to the bhajan. And you'll see, tri bhuvana pavana kripaya lesham, same word as there, lesha, atapite deva patambujaya, doya prasada, lesha, lesha means just a little bit. Tatayana, it's like a, if you were in forensic science and you're trying to, you, all you need is a trace. One piece of DNA is on the cloth, then you can prove. It's, it's, uh, it's tiny, but it's, it, it's there. And once it's there, it's, it's all over, <laughs> case closed. So same thing, if, if one fraction piece of DNA catches on to you from this bhakti process, then your material life will be finished, either today or tomorrow, but it's a fact. So he says, Tri bhuvana pavana kripaya, a fraction of his mercy is able to deliver all the three worlds under that son of Sri Shachi Devi, I bow. So those who know this about Sri Taitani Mahaprabhu, they give their full attention to him because they understand, as Karabhajan Muni says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that his lotus feet, that is Sri Taitani Mahaprabhu's lotus feet, are the sum total of all the holy places. Every holy place is contained within the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So if you bow down there and you dedicate your activities to him, then all is well. Two, within himself there are transformations of ecstasy, such as faltering of the voice. The mighty sound of his voice chastises wicked men. His mercy dispels all fears caused by worldly existence. Unto that, son of Sri Shachi Devi, I bow. Quintessential Sanskrit verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam that expresses how transformations take place within the body of someone uh, who chants Hare Krishna, or don't. You can give either verse. There's one in the second canto that says one who's chanting and, they, and he or she doesn't experience transformations is uh, steel-hearted, or you can give a verse from the Bhagavatam that says that by chanting Hare Krishna, one experiences transformations within the body. Shredder Devi has it in the front row. Here's your mic. This is from 11th Canto, 2nd Chapter, Verse yes. 40. Evam Vrata, evam vrata Swapiya Nama Kirtiya Jatanu Rago Dutta Chutta Ucche Hasati Ati Rodh Ati Rati Gayati Unmad Vanrit Ati Lok Bhaya Number of the verse again? I think it's 4-0. 4 to 0 <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I'll say, please repeat. Evam Vritasva Priyanama Kirtya Jichanu Rago Dhruta Chitta Uchai Pasatya Toro Dhuti Rauti Gayati Unmada Vanrityati Loka Bhayaha Translation is by chanting the holy name of the Supreme Lord, one comes to the stage of love of Godhead. Then the devotee is fixed in his vow as an eternal servant of the Lord, and he gradually becomes very much attached to a particular name and form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As his heart melts with ecstatic love, he laughs very loudly or cries or shouts. Sometimes he sings and dances like a madman, for he is indifferent to public opinion. Now give the other verse that says, if you're chanting Hare Krishna and this doesn't happen to you, then you're a nonsense. The other verse? Second canto. Steel framed. Two, three, twenty-four. Brace yourselves. I'll say, please repeat. 
Tadashmasaram Radayam Bhatanam Yagrihamana Harinam Adhyay Navikriyatata Yadavikaro Nitri Jalam Gatra Ruhesha Harsha Translation is certainly that heart is steel framed, which in spite of one's chanting the holy name of the Lord with concentration does not change when ecstasy takes place, tears fill the eyes, and the hairs stand on end. The meaning of this verse is that if you're chanting, it, it's a little convoluted, the translation. Actually, it's, it's a little convoluted. But the fact is, the, the verse means that if you're chanting and you're not experiencing changes in your life and in your heart, then you're making offenses somehow. So you've got to be careful. Otherwise, you can chant and chant and chant, and your, your heart will remain the same. So you have to chant and avoid the offenses. Back to the bhajan. Number three. He wears garments the color of the rising sun. His cheeks are very captivating. His fingernails surpass the beauty and radiance of the moon. He takes delight in uttering the glories of his own transcendental qualities and holy name. Unto that son of Sri Shachi Devi I bow. Streams of ecstatic tears flow from his lotus eyes. He is ornamented with transformations of ecstasy caused by ever new loving mellows. His pastimes of dancing exhibit very slow and graceful movements. Unto that son of Sri Shachi Devi I bow. So we saw, we see at the Rathiatra when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing, he's taken the, the role of Srimati Radharani and Lord Jagannath on his cart going to the Gudicha temple, going back to Vrindavan, is uh, Krishna. And they're having this relationship, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, during the, the parade, the procession of the Lord going back to Vrindavan, is dancing in ecstasy, and tears are shooting from his eyes, like as if from a syringe. This ecstasy is, is flowing within him. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, who comes as his own devotee, imbued with the sentiment and also the radiance of Srimati Radharani. And it's an esoteric point that's made in the beginning of the Sri Chaitanya Charamrita. And that is that Krishna notices that Srimati Radharani enjoys more than he does in the relationship because he's the object of love and she's the one who's appreciating that object of love. So who enjoys more, the object of love or the one who's appreciating the object of love? The one who's appreciating. So Krishna, being the supreme enjoyer, now has a conundrum because he says, how can I be the supreme enjoyer if someone's enjoying more than I am? Now to taste his own sweetness, actually to taste the sweetness of Srimati Radharani's love and the magnanimity, the, 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 the huge love that she has, I don't like that. But give me the verse from the Mangala Charita, Chaitanya Charita, please. Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vanayaiva Swadyo Yina Bhuta Madarima Kidrisho Chaitanya Charita, Adi Lila, Verse number six or seven? Five. Six. Okay, this is a secret verse. Don't tell anybody. If you, listen, if, you, if you can't keep a secret, then go out of the room until we finish this. Okay? Say yes. yes. You can't tell anybody. Work with me, people. It's only half an hour. Okay, here we go. Please repeat. Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisham Vari Kidrishovana Yaiva. Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrishovana Yaiva. Svadhyo yina bhuta madurima kidrisho va madhya Svadhyo 
Saukyam Shasya Mad Anubhavata Kidrasham Veti Lobhad Tad Bhava Dhyasamajani Shachi Ghurbar Sindhau Harindu Translation Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love, the Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appeared from the womb of Srimati Sachi Devi as the moon appeared from the ocean. So this is the secret of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. It's Krishna, but he's come to actually enjoy the position of Sri Matirani and to understand the glory of her love. And this, you'll go back to the bhajan, is why we see streams of ecstatic tears flowing from his eyes, transformations in ecstasy. This all takes place in the body of Sri Matirani, you'll find throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam. How she has various symptoms of what is called Mahabhava. It's the highest level of love of God. Uh, no one can imitate that, but she is the emblem of the topmost level of devotional service. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he's come imbued with that love, and he plays the part of his own devotee simply to experience that love that Srimati Radharani has, and it's all explained in the verse that we just read, so everyone should memorize that verse. Shri Radhaya. Okay, number five. The nimble movements of his beautiful dancing feet are very pleasing. Those two feet are sweetened by tinkling ankle bells. His soothing face surpasses the cooling rays of the moon. Unto that sun of Sri Shachi Devi I bow. He sometimes wears a loincloth of a mendicant and takes up the staff and water pot of a sannyasi monk. His transcendental body is then graced by a shaven head. His chastisement breaks apart and destroys the sins of wicked souls. Unto that son of Shish, Shachi Devi I bow. This is an important point about chastisement. Actually, to receive the chastisement of a great soul, what to speak of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the greatest benediction. And you'll find throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam that every great achievement of a devotee within the Bhagavatam or any new episode which brings us to a higher level of understanding Krishna consciousness is always preceded by a curse or chastisement. So actually, I'm intoxicated with the material energy and I think that I'll just stay here. Someone may wake me up, then I'll just go back to sleep, push the snooze button again and again. Until there's a strong enough chastisement by Krishna's arrangement, not until that time do I actually seriously take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. So one can take the chastisements of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the greatest mercy. Also, it's a sign of intimacy. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chastised Jagadananda in front of Sanatan Goswami, Sanatan complained. He said, you're giving deference to Jagannanda, you show him more affection than to me because you feel free to chastise him. Whereas me, you treat with reverence. Advaita Acharya also didn't like that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Nimai Pandit treated him as a superior. He treated him like a spiritual master. And Advaita Acharya actually engineered a situation so that Nimai Pandit would chastise him, and he did severely chastise him. He spoke Mayavad philosophy from his Bhagavad, his nightly Bhagavad Gita class. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came out, he came and he pounded him. And then Avetacharya smiled and he said, just see, now everyone knows who my superior is. So the devotees appreciate the chastisement. If you can take the chastisement as the, the reward of the master, then you can learn the lesson that caused you to make the mistake in the first place or that helps you to overcome any of the mistakes. Punishment as a reward. Look that up, please. 
look up that phrase, punishment as the reward. Or just, if the the messes up the search, then just put punishment and reward. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Let's see which device is faster. Four, four, couldn't hear you. 42621 Srimad Bhagavatam Punishment reward master put those three What's the verse 42621 Here you go you're in for a treat If you've ever felt hesitant to take a chastisement raise your hand if you love chastisement, you want people to criticize you, to raise your hand. Okay, one, two. Only two of you. <laughs> okay, let's look at the, uh, the verse in purple. You're sure this is it, right? The last, last. 4.26.21. It's in Prabhupada's purport. Okay, okay. Let's read the verse in purport. Is it a long one? No. Okay. Translation, please. King Paranjana said, my dear, my dear beautiful wife, when a master accepts a servant as his own man, but does not punish him for his offenses, the servant must be considered unfortunate. It's in there, right? Yes. Okay, purport. According to Vedic civilization, domestic animals and servants are treated exactly like one's own children. Animals and children are sometimes punished not out of vengeance, but out of love. Similarly, a master sometimes punishes his servant not out of vengeance, but out of love to correct him and bring him to the right point. Thus King Paranjana took his punishment dealt by his wife, the queen, as mercy upon him. He considered himself the most obedient servant of the queen. She was angry at him for his sinful activities, namely hunting in the forest and leaving her at home. King Paranjana accepted the punishment as actual love and affection from his wife. In the same way, when a person is punished by the laws of nature, by the will of God, he should not be disturbed. A real devotee thinks in this way. When a devotee is put into an awkward position, he takes it as the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Ready? Tate nukampam susamikshamano unjane eva makritam vipakam rigvadva purvi vidadam namaste jiveta yo mukti pade sadaya bhak. This verse states that the devotee accepts a reversal of his position in life as a benediction of the Lord and consequently offers the Lord more obeisances and prayers, thinking that the punishment is due to his past misdeeds and that the Lord is punishing him very mildly. The punishment awarded by the state or by God for one's own faults is actually for one's benefit. In the Manasanghita, it is said that the king should be considered merciful when he condemns a murderer to death because a murderer punished in this life becomes freed from his sinful activity and in the next life takes birth cleared of all sins. If one accepts punishment as a reward dealt by the master, he becomes intelligent enough not to commit the same mistake again. We'll read it all together, starting with if one. If one accepts punishment as a reward dealt by the master, he becomes intelligent not to commit the same mistake again. That's uh, worth codifying and keeping in one's pocket. Back to the bhajan. He sometimes wears a loincloth of mendicant. Did I read that? Chastisement. As a householder, his face is surrounded by locks of dark hair decorated with the dust of the earth. His excellent lips, which are red like that needs a uh, fix there shamalungi it says r red line the bimba fruit are beautified by their trembling and ecstasy upon his forehead he wears brilliant tilak made of sandalwood paste unto that son of sri sachi devi i bow the glowing beauty of his lotus petal eyes exceeds that of the rising sun 
His two beautiful arms extend down to his knees. His divine body is dressed in the fashion of an adolescent dramatic dancer. Unto that son of Sri Shachi Devi, I bow. Ajanurambita bujau kanakavatato sankirta naikipitaro kamalaya taksho vishvambaro dvijabaro yugatarma palo vandejaga priyakaro karunavataro. Where's that verse from? That's right. Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, verse number? Verse. First, first. So this is, as we know, the Mangalacharna from the Chaitanya Charamita. Do we not? We know it all? Then we also can look into the, the Mangalacharna for the Ch Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. Let's look at it. Search for it, you'll find it. Search and you shall find. <laughs> Knock and it shall be opened to you. Chop, chop. We have the Chaitanya Bhagavat on the Veda base, so it should be there. If you could all search for it on the Veda base. It would be a great boon for humanity. We have to have that verse. Now, the verse is parallel to the last uh, verse of this Ashtakam, Sri Sachitanai Ashtakam. You'll see. What's going on in there? Shri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Ajano Lambita Bujo Kanaka Vadato. We should be in great anxiety right now. We can't find the verse. Imagine that uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was looking for a copy of the Chaitanya Charamrita and he couldn't find it anywhere. Nowadays we can get anything, but we don't even look for it. This is interesting. <laughs> you got it? We have a we have a positive contact reported here from the from the Okay. It's also in the Veda base, but wherever we can find it, let's go ahead and read. I offer my respectful obeisances to the two fathers of the Sankirtan movement, whose long arms reach to their knees, who are splendid like gold, whose large eyes are lotus flowers, who are the maintainers of the world, the best of the brahmanas, and the protectors of the Yuga Dharma, the religion of the age, who bring happiness to the people of the world, and who have come to this place because they are very merciful. Exactly. Now, why can't you find it in the Veda base? Okay, we'll find it on the CD version. Don't you have it on your hard drive? You have it here? You have uh, Bhakti Sananta Saraswati's purport? Correct. Okay, Shamalungi, you, uh, you need to put this on our list of verses that we s recite every day. We could do this one every day. Can you expand the size of that, please? Is it possible? Just copy it and put it somewhere. Oh my goodness, it says it's by Rupa Goswami. <laughs> I don't see. Wait. Unless Vrindavan Das Thakur included his verse. Okay. Hare Krishna. This is a serious operation. <laughs> but it's worthwhile. I mean, 
ta the trouble it takes to go on pilgrimage. For instance, if you ha if you want to go to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Jagannath, you got to buy a ticket. You got to sit in airports. They'll cancel your flight. You get there, it's you know, nothing works. But everything that you put into it is purifying. So similarly, when you're looking for these verses, all the trouble that you take is highly purifying. It's okay. We're getting there. At least we can chant it together. I'll say, please repeat. Ah, Janu Lambita. Just listen and then repeat. Ah, Janu Lambita Bujau Kanakava Datao. Sam Kirtanai Kapitarao Kamalaya Taksha. Vishvambarao, Dvijavarao, Yuga Dharma Palo. Vande Jagat Priyakarao, Karunavatarao. There you see right there, CB stands for Chaitanya Bhagavat. Who wrote the Chaitanya Bhagavat? Vrindavan Nastakur, and this is the Adikanda 1 1. So this is the, the opening verse of the Chaitanya Bhagavat. And here's what it says. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Nityananda Prabhu, whose arms extend down to their knees, who have golden yellow complexions, and who inaugurated the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Their eyes resemble the petals of a lotus flower. They are the maintainers of the living entities, the best of the brahmanas, the protectors of religious principles for this age, the benefactors of the universe, and the most merciful of all incarnations. This is a beautiful verse. It's one that you can keep, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep it in our repertoire, okay? And there's a long purport, uh, which we won't go into right now, but it's, uh, there's commentary by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur explaining this Mangalacharana verse and how it relates to the entire book, the Chaitanya Bhagavat. There's very deep meanings to each one of these statements about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he explicates there. Did we finish the bhajan? So that's the Sri Sachi Tanai Ashtakam. And who is it written by? Sarvabhom Bhattacharya. So this has great historical significance, devotional significance, and it's a beautiful bhajan uh, or ashtakam. And when it when it gets in your mind and heart, then it'll uplift you. It'll bring you into the, the Holy Dom, mm -hmm. even as you're walking around Silicon Valley. And now here's our next ashtakam for this morning. Pardon me? Nityananda ashtakam. This one's said to be by Vrindavan Das Thakur. And uh, you'll see the last line at the bottom, starting with Bhaje. It goes like this. Baje Nityanandam Bajana Tarukandam Niravadhi. Everyone. Baje Nityanandam Bajana Tarukandam Niravadhi. But twice as slow because it's a hard, a hard one to follow uh, the whole thing. So let's say. Baje Nityanandam Bajana Tarukandam Niravadhi from the top, all together. Sharach Chandra Brantim Spuranamalakantim Gajagatim Hari Premon Matam Trita Paramasatvam Smitam Kam Sada gurnan netram karakalita detram kalibidham Baje nityanandam bajana tarukandam niravadhi Two. Rasanam agaram swajana gana sarvasvamatulam Tadiyaika prana 
Pratima Vasuda Janava Patim Sada Premon Madam Parama Viditam Mandamanasam Baje Nityanandam Bajana Tadukandam Niravadhi. You need to put a little more into the last line though. Shachi Suna Preshtam Nikila Jagadishtam Sukamayam Kalamajaj Chiva Dharana Karano Dhamakarunam Harir Akyanadva Bhava Jaladi Gavo Natiharam Bhaje Nityanandam Bhajanatarukandam Nairvadidhi Aye Bratanrinam Kalikulushinam Kinubavita Tata prayashitam Rachaya yadanaya sata ine Rajanti twam itam Sahabhagavata mantra yati yo Bajanit yanandam Bajana tarukandam niravati Yasheshtam re brata Koru hari hari dvana namisham Tato vasam saram Buritara nadayo mailaged Idam bahus potar atatiratayanya pratigraham Baje nityanandam bajana tarukandam diravahi Balat samsarambo nidiharana kumbod bhava maho Satam shreya sindhu nati kumuda bandhum samuditam Kala shreni spurjat timirahara surya prabhamaham Baje nityanandam Bajana tarukandam diravadhi Natantam gayantam harim anuvadantam pati pati Brajantam pashyantam swamapinadayantam janaganam Prakurvantam santam Sakaruna drigantam prakalanan Baje nityanandam Bajana tarukandam niravadhi Subibranam bratu Karasarasijam komatalaram Mito vaktra lokach Chalita Paramananda Hridayam Brahmantam Maduya Ahaha Madayantam Burajanam Baje Nityanandam Bajana Tarukandam Niravadhi Rasanam Adaram Rasikavarasad Vaishnavadanam Rasagaram saram patita tatitaram smananata Paramityanandas takamidam apurvam patatiyas Tadangiri dvandvam chandhuratanidham tasya hridaye Last line again. Tadangiri dvandvam Do you, have, you all have it? You say it. Tadangiri dvanvabjam Svudatu nitaram tasya ridaye Tadangiri dvanvabjam 
Shamsputato ni taram tasya hridaye. Try it again. Tadangiri dvam bhajam Tadangiri dvam bhajam Spuratu niratam tasya hridaye. There you have it. Baje nityanandam Bajana Tarukandam Diravad He Translation But fasten your seat belts. I perpetually worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, whose bright face mocks the full autumn moon, whose pure complexion glistens whose gait is like that of a maddened elephant, who is always intoxicated in Krishna Prema, who embodies pure spiritual energy, whose face holds a gentle smile, whose eyes are always rolling due to his absorption in Krishna Prema, whose lotus hand holds a glowing staff, and who by the performance of Nam Sankirtan pierces the influence of Kali Yuga. I perpetually worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, who is the mainstay of all the rasas, who is everything to his devotees, who is beyond compare, who is the master of both Vasudha and Janava Devi, who consider him more dear than their own lives, who is always maddened in Krishna Prema, and who is unknown only to those of meager intelligence. I perpetually worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, who is very dear to Sri Shachinandan, who is worshipped by the entire universe, who is the embodiment of happiness, who possesses infinite mercy for delivering the souls who are drowning in the age of Kali, and who, by the performance of Sri Harinam Sankirtan, thwarts the progressing false pride of the ocean of repeated birth and death. I perpetually worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, who said to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Hey, Brother Gauranga, what will be the destination of the sinful souls of Kali Yuga, and how will they be redeemed? Please devise a method by which they will easily attain you. I perpetually worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, who wandered around Bengal and approaching the door of each and every home, raised his arms up by and exclaimed, Oh brothers, all of you should eternally perform Sri Hanidam Sankirtan together. By doing so, I will take the responsibility to deliver you all from the ocean of material existence. I eternally worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, who is the Augusta Muni, who forcibly swallows the ocean of repeated birth and death, who is a rising full moon, which increases the ocean of the saintly person's welfare, and who is a sun which dissipates the darkness of ignorance cast by the various classes of miscreants. I eternally worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, who wandered on every path in Bengal, dancing, singing, and calling out, Haribo! Haribo! And who lovingly bestowed merciful sidelong glances upon those who were not compassionate to even their own selves. I perpetually worship Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the root of the Krishna Bhakti tree, who held the supremely soft lotus hand of his brother Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu, whose heart became filled with the highest bliss when the two brothers gazed into each other's faces and who wandered here and there, delighting the townspeople with his sweetness. May Sri Nityananda Prabhu place his lotus feet in the heart of one who lovingly recites this unprecedented Nityanandashtaka, which is the reservoir of rasa, greatest treasure of the most exalted Rasika Vaishnavas, and is a storehouse of the essence of Bhakti Rasa. Nacheri Armarman, Nacheri Armarman.
Natchery Armarman, Natchery Armarman, hey, Natchery Armarman, Natchery Armarman, Natchery Armarman, Natchery Armarman.